Good day, good day, good day, everyone. Yes, here. It's been a while since I made a, one of these type of videos. But actually, this video is going to be for one of my followers by the name of Bruno the... What was it? Bruno the... No, it was Lars the Bruno or something like that. I, I, I can't remember, but got a message from him like two weeks ago asking me if I could make a video talking about the subjunctive uh, for Spanish. Uh, at the time when he sent me this message, or I should be talking to you, when you sent me this message, um, I didn't really have, um, I was still kind of, this was blurry to me. This was a blur, this subjunctive, and I'm actually still working on it. So um, I was able, to, I was unable to make the video uh, sooner. But now I am getting used to it, although there are still some irregulars that I haven't really mastered when it comes to this uh, grammar here, uh, the subjunctive. So I need some more time with it. So basically in this video here, I'm going to break down the subjunctive easily. The first thing you need to learn about the subjunctive, okay? So before we start, um, obviously we need to know what subjunctive, what, what subjunctive means. Um, if you don't understand the concept of, of subjunctivity, then it's kind of useless. And um, it's kind of useless to try to understand all the verbs, the irregular verbs, before understanding the concept. So what does it mean? What does subjunctivity mean? Basically, um, to keep it simple, put it in simple terms, um, something that isn't guaranteed. For example, like... Um, I want you to go to the store with me tomorrow, okay? But it's a possibility that you won't be able to go or you just won't go, you know, or you will go. We don't know for sure. But for a fact, I want you to do it with me. That's subjunctivity. I need, um, you need something done or you need something in general. Um, although you need that, you probably won't get it. It's not guaranteed that you'll get it. Uh, what's another one? Uh, a request. We're going to talk about these in a minute. Necessities. Those are all subjunctivity. So basically just remember that um, it's it's when something isn't going to happen like guaranteed. It's not guaranteed to happen. Okay. So um, that's my basic understanding of the subjunctivity. So just keep that in mind. And um, yeah. So let me get in, let me get in here and show you guys some more stuff. I'm keeping track of my time. We still got just two minutes here. All right. So, as I just mentioned, these words here are dealing with subjunctivity. Desire, necessity, <clears throat> excuse me, doubt, demand, request, and maybe. These are all dealing with subjunctivity in Spanish. OK, when you see those come up or you're about to use this, uh, a sent, use any of these in a sentence, you got to think about the subjunctive. It's, it's a highly po it's a possibility that you're going to need to change the verb to the subjunctive. All right. So what I'm going to use here today um, are the basic like basic verbs, regular verbs. OK, I'm not going to do any irregulars. So we're going to use hablar, comer and vivir. OK, hablar to speak. Comer, to eat, and vivir, to live. These are very common verbs in the regular form. Now, when it comes to the subjunctive, what you need to understand is with A, you need to understand A, R, E, R, and I, R, those have to change. So if it's a verb ending with, I, uh, with A, R, such as hablar, then you have to change that A, R to an E. Okay, it becomes E. Drop off the AR and add an E. Or depending on what, if it's me, if you're saying you, him, they, she, etc. Okay? But you have to change the A to an E. Comer and Bibir, IR and ER, same. They're, they're the same. You have to change those to, um, you have to change those to an A. Okay? So for example, coma, Biba. Alright? Sorry for going back and forth. I just don't want to get cut off. I want to start it here in just a second. Okay. So ER and IR are pretty much the same. All right. So recap. If it's a verb ending with AR, you have to change the A to an E. 
if it's ER, IR, to an A. That's simple for subjectivity. All right? So, here are some example sentences. Let's, let's start with the first one. Quiero que hables en español conmigo ahorita. Quiero que hables en español conmigo ahorita. So, I want you to speak in Spanish with me right now. I want that you speak in Spanish with me right now. So, our verb here is hablar. As you can see here, we change the AR to an ES. First of all, A has to become E. Okay? And then we're talk I'm talking to you, so I have to add S. Not hablas, but hables. Alright? So, AR becomes ES. Now, if, it was, if, it, if I was talking about myself, if I put myself in a subjunctive mood, then it will be hablé. But since I'm talking to you, it'll be ES. Alright? That's simple. Alright, moving on to the next one. Busco un gente que viva en España. Busco, wait, busco un gente que viva en España. Alright? I'm looking for a person who lives in Spain. I'm looking for a person who lives in Spain. So busco is I'm looking for searching. Un gente is one person, a person. Que, who or that. Viva, live in España, living in Spain. So what's our verb here? Vivir. Vivir or vivir. I'll get, I always mess up on those. Uh, if I'm messing up on the pronunciation, let me know. Vivir. I say vivir, vivir. I always kind of mess those up. But here's the verb vivir. Um, you have to change it to an A because it's I-R. All right. And now it's I, not S, because we're talking about someone else, some other person. So viva, viva. All right. So that's the subjunctive. So, um, oh, I forgot to mention the last sentence. Quiero que, yeah. So this is this this is a desire. I want I want that you speak in Spanish with me now, but perhaps you wouldn't speak with me because you're afraid or maybe you just don't feel comfortable. So it's subjunctive mood. Busco un gente. I'm looking for someone. Okay. This is subjunctive. Why is it subjunctive? Because I'm looking for someone. And it's not guaranteed. I'm, it's not guaranteed that I'm going to find them. So it's subjunctive, su subjunctive mood. All right. Moving on to the next one. Tal vez él coma comida picante también. Tal vez él coma comida picante también. So perhaps he eats spicy food as well. Perhaps he eats spicy food as well. What's our verb here? Comer. And what do we have to do? We had to change the ER to an A. We have coma because now we're talking about someone else again. Likewise, previous sentence we made. So coma. Uh, he eats. Why is, it, why is it subjunctive move? Because we have talvet. Remember we said it's maybe or perhaps. Maybe. He, I'm not sure if he eats spicy food. Maybe. He, maybe he eats spicy food. It's not guaranteed. That's subjunctive. Alright. Moving on to the next one. Estoy aprendiendo un idioma, así que necesito alguien que hable otros idiomas también. Alright. Estoy aprendiendo un idioma, así que necesito alguien que hable otros idiomas también. I am learning a language. Therefore, I need someone who I need someone who speaks other languages as well. I am learning a language. Therefore, I need someone who speaks other languages as well. So, estoy aprendiendo, that means I am learning un idioma, a language. Así que therefore Así que Necesito, I need, alguien is someone, que hable, who speaks or that speaks, otros idiomas también, other languages as well. Okay. So, what's our verb here in this sentence? Our verb is, uh, let me see. Netis, let's see, what is it? What is it? Let's start putting the end though. Well, we have a couple verbs here, but which one are we focusing on? Uh, oh, hablar. Hablar is our main verb we're focusing on here. So, 
I need, okay, hablar, first of all, hablar is AR, so we change to an E, and we're talking about someone else, so it's just an E, not hables, it's hable, not habla, hable, okay, so that's our E, and then uh, why is it subjunctive? Because we, I need someone, like I need this person, it's not, I need this person, but it's not guaranteed that I'm going to be able to find this person, it's not guaranteed that it's going to happen, okay, so it's subjunctive, all right? Moving on to the next one. Es aconsejable que practiques con los nativos, nativos, todo el posible, a no ser que tienes miedo a hacerlo. Es aconsejable que practiques con los nati uh, nat nativos, uh, nativos, todo el posible, a no ser que tienes miedo a hacerlo. It is advisable. It is advisable that you speak with the natives as much as possible unless you are afraid. It is advisable that you speak with the natives as much as possible unless you are afraid, unless you have fear. What's our main verb here? Platicar. Platicar here means to speak to someone, to converse. So. Platicar is AR, so what you have to do is change the AR to an E, okay? Platicar becomes platiques because I'm talking to you, all right? So, it's subjunctive. Why is it subjunctive? Because this es aconsejable. This, the, the aconsejable is advisable. I advise you to do something. I'm advising you, but it doesn't mean that you're going to do it right away. I'm just giving you advice on what you need to do, Okay? It's not guaranteed that you will do it, so it's subjunctive. So, therefore, we have to change the verb into the subjunctive form, which in this case is plactiques from plactica. All right? So, yeah, that's it. Oh, I'm not, let me, let me break this sentence down real quick. I still got a little time. So, that's our verb. Um, let's see. So, es aconsejable. Excuse me. It's advisable that... Plactiques, you, sp you speak con los nativos, with los nativos, excuse me, <clears throat> man, los, los nativos, the natives, todo, uh, todo el posible, as much as possible, a no ser que, unless, a no ser que, tienes miedo a hacerlo, unless you have fear, you tiene, miedo is fear, and then, Atherlo, you have fear to do it. Ather means to do, and then lo is, is it, referring to the object. So atherlo, to do that or to do it. So it is advisable that you you speak with natives as much as possible, unless you are afraid to do it. So that is it. Um, I'm going to make a second part of this or another part. Yeah, another part of this video, just to show you guys um, a resource, a highly recommended resource that I have for several uh, several different languages. I use it for Japanese first and it's very very it's very good. So I'm going to make this I'm going to connect it to the next part and um, if you guys have any questions let me know. I'll talk to you guys here shortly. Alright this is just a continuation of the uh, ooh, from the video I just made on the uh, Spanish verbs, the um, subjunctive I just want to recommend a uh, resource I have for uh, Spanish in terms of the grammar. Um, if you're interested, you should definitely look into the Shams Outlines series. Um, I have it for Japanese, French, Russian, German, um, <clears throat> and of course Spanish. And um, I like how they have it laid out. They explain, they give you like very, very good explanations on how to use certain verbs or just you know anything about the uh, grammar in general. So, um, since we're talking about the subjunctive here, this book is very good when it comes to that. And I'll just show you here a little bit of the layout. So, as you can see, starting here, subjunctive. So they explain 
the subjunctive, the subjunctive, subjunctive here. Give you some examples. Lots and lots of examples. And then, as we talked about in the video, there are the uh, regular verbs hablar, comer, vivir. And they show you how to break those down in the, sub in the present subjunctive. Stem changes verbs. And then, uh, as I mentioned, there are a lot of irregulars, um, obviously, and they'll give you a handful of them here on the next page. So you just have to practice them. You'll see them in context many times. I remember seeing them before. I was a bit confused uh, at the beginning. It's like, wait a minute, how's a, uh, you know, ear becomes aya and. I've saw it in the context many times and didn't understand why, but I didn't really worry about it that much. I just continued until I started to get comfortable with a lot of the Spanish and then now turn to a grammar book and go through it. And um, I learned that it was subjunctive. So irregulars, and they show you how to use a lot of that, a lot of that stuff. And then they give you some exercises. So this is a really good book for grammar and, uh, I highly recommend it. Shams Outlines for any language, actually. So, all right, that is it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions about this um, this particular video I made on the subjunctive. Um, as usual, if I made any any mistakes, you kept you guys caught anything? Maybe my pronunciation was off a little bit, which I, I'm sure it will be. Um, let me know, and uh, we'll appreciate it. So, thanks a lot for viewing, and uh, talk to you guys here shortly.